Hey folks, Eric from Another Voice with Jason and Eric. Heard Mondays 1 to 2 p.m. on Spin FM 103.3 in Greenville, Greer, and Spartanburg. You can also find our podcast on our website at canigetawordin.com or go to iTunes, subscribe to our podcast channel, Another Voice with Jason and Eric. Now, the conventions are over. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm a political junkie, sort of, and I didn't want to watch all of the speeches. Uh, we've got one more speech to review, and that, of course, would be the big one, President Obama's acceptance speech. Um, it's no surprise that President Obama gave a good speech. He is a good speaker, and a good speech is what brought him into the national limelight at the uh, 2004 Democratic Convention, where he was the keynote speaker. So the fact he gave a good speech is not surprising. It was a good speech. It wasn't as good as President Clinton's, I don't think. I think President Clinton did a wonderful job in comparison. But the President's speech was very good. And one thing I liked about it, and this was similar to what was in President Clinton's speech, it was positive, uplifting. Yes, they criticized the right. Yes, they smacked at him. And yes, it was partisan, but it was less partisan and less negative, more importantly. I felt like the the view you got of America, of what we're going through, how we're living, was more positive. It reminded me, both his and Clinton's speech, of the view of Ronald Reagan when he gave his speeches during some of the tough times, when our, def our deficit was through the ceiling and we were having all kinds of employment issues. He was able to inspire. Now, whether President Obama was able to inspire anyone other than the left, that remains to be seen because what I, I feel we've had happen in this country is that average people have kind of made camps where not only do they disagree with the policies of the opposite side, that's understandable, but they disagree with the individual, that there is nothing that individual can do. It's almost with great reluctance that you'll hear a conservative say that President Obama made the right choice and was it was did was good was pr was brave to go after bin laden and get him killed it's it's almost like pulling teeth to get them to say yeah that was a good thing that he did and almost always when they say that they tack on three or four other things that they view as uh problems in foreign policy and the conservatives aren't alone liberals do the same thing you know mitt romney is not perfect and there are problems with Mitt Romney, but if you listen to liberals, uh, you would think that Mitt Romney was the devil incarnate. So um, we've got these camps, and this is what bothers me because you, you're like, let me give an example. I'll tell you what I'm trying to say. I am a Yankees baseball fan. I hope that doesn't turn you all off. But I'm a bigger baseball fan, and I remember a game where the Yankees were playing the Red Sox a few years back. Now, the Red Sox are... You know, the evil empire, the bad things were from a Yankee point of view. But as I watched that game and the Yankees were ahead three or four runs, I didn't feel comfortable because I respected the talent that was on that other team. I wanted to beat them. I was glad that we did. But I respected the talent on there. In politics, we don't have that, it seems. It seems like you can't say that was a good speech. And I, I miss that. But I think the president gave a very good speech. And I think yeah, he did what he needed to do. He made his case for why he should keep his job. Now, you may disagree with it, and that's fine. And you may say, you didn't do enough. You didn't do right. You did some bad things, some wrong things. But he made his case, I think. But he wasn't without some exaggeration, some misdirection. I will say, though, and, and this is not because I favor President Obama over Mitt Romney or because I'm more of a liberal than I am a conservative or vice versa. This is this observation. All partisan speeches shade the truth. All partisan speeches tend to focus on one aspect of a situation and not reveal one part and not talk about the other part because the one part fits their narrative. So I, President Obama did that just like all the Democrats did and all the Republicans did. I will say the one difference was Governor Romney, Representative Ryan, and some of the others came out and made clear lies now 
But what bothers me the most is let's say that was that they didn't mean it the way they said it. Let's say it was a, a, a they should have said it differently and they realize it, but they're still saying it the exact same thing. The seven hundred and sixteen billion stolen from Medicare to pay Obamacare. That's not a fact. The plant in Janeville, Wisconsin was closed before President Obama ever took office. While I, as a nonpartisan, hate to hear the shading and hate to see the only one part of the truth come up, and one of the reasons we have this show is while someone's holding up one part of truth, we want to lift up the rest of the truth so you can see all of it. I understand that in partisan politics. What I don't agree with is straight, straight out lies. But let's talk about some of the exaggerations, some of the shading that the president did. He talked about his budget was going to save four trillion dollars over 10 years and experts agreed with him on that and some did but part of what he was talking about was the, the the money being saved from winding down the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan the problem is that's not new he already was doing this he already talked about this they were already planning to save that money so it's not a new thing so it was kind of like if you're adding that in oh, come on that's not completely it's not fair because you already talked about it plus He's also talked about using some of that money to, to pay down the debt as well as to save money elsewhere. So that was kind of, uh, you're, you're exaggerating, you're shading, you're ignoring um, the quite the fact. Yes, you're going to use those, those savings, but you already said that. Um, he mentioned that the U.S. automakers are back on top again. Well, they're not right now. Uh, GM was back to number one. And now it appears in global auto sales, and it appears that uh, they're number two now, and uh, VW may knock them down to number three. That's what I would say was you're using a figure that was higher a couple months ago. The point was they were headed to disaster, and now they're at the top. So I would say, okay, come on, you got to be more specific, more accurate. Um, they criticized uh, Governor Romney for saying that withdrawal of the troops from Iraq was tragic. Now, that's not exactly correct. What Governor Romney said in a, in a debate, I believe it was in South Carolina, was that the president's timetable and, and pulling them out when he did was, was not only bad, it was tragic. So he was criticizing President Obama for pulling the troops out when he did not simply for pulling the troops out he also mentioned about the tax rate for the upper one percent or the above two hundred and fifty thousand dollars that he was wanting to return it back to the rate it was when clinton was in office and yes he does but they'll have to pay a little more uh possibly because there's an extra tax in the uh, affordable care act that adds up there so that was more Again, it wasn't a lie. It was more that he was wanting to send to that rate, but then there's some other things that are coming in that might affect it. And then on energy, he didn't. He talked about how our dependence on foreign oil has dropped dramatically, how our increase in the use of uh, domestic oil and gas is up, and both of those are factual statements. This is why I talk about the fact that this is not lies, but shading it. What, and he he claims responsibility or his policies for that action. The problem is those those uh, curves going up and down in the right way are partially from his policies, but more from policies before. So the continuing of those policies and the policies he's taken. Now, I will take the Republicans to task. When he said, I heard one of the big talk shows telling that President Obama lied when he said that the under his administration, they'd opened up millions of more uh, uh, acres of drilling for, for oil. And this big talk show said, no, he's a lie. Well, no, the president was right. I read an article just the other day about the exploratory drilling off the coast of Alaska and the Arctic Shelf, uh, more in different places. So they are opening up more. And they're doing more with the, the gas with uh, fracking, which could be a whole other discussion. Well, the concept is, the president was telling the truth, but not the whole truth. And that's why I say politics do. Um, folks, that's why I say all the time, read the ads, listen to the ads, and then go on your computer and find the facts. Because no matter who you support, 
no matter who you are in favor of, they're human. They're going to not tell the whole story. Or they might go as far as lying. So look at the facts and be honest in the evaluation. All right. The partisan parties are over. And now we get the big campaign with a big slugging out. We'll be talking about the debates coming up. And we'll be covering those. Make sure you tune in on Monday to can I get a word in dot com. I'm sorry. Go to man. I'm having trouble. Listen to us to Monday at one o'clock on WOLT 103.3. And if you're not in the Greenville, Greer or Spartanburg area, you can go online to WOLT FM dot com and here listen to us live. All right. Until next time. Have a great evening.